Well guys, you're looking at the only boost thing I own right now. Not really the video I want to be making, but uh, if you guys do want your own Boost Life shirt or to support the channel in any way, uh, check out RevRider550.com. I got a couple options on this and some hats and some hoodies and all that. So um, appreciate it if you do pick something up, but just watching the video means a lot too. And uh, let's jump into this. So currently my sled is scheduled to be built between January 3rd and January 13th. Um, it is January 10th and this video will most likely come out January 12th. So. If I release it, it means my sled has not been built. Uh, nothing has changed in the order status at all. Um, and I guess I was right back in October. I didn't really wanna be right. I was hoping that things would work out better than this, but um, you know, we're headed towards the middle of January. Even if the sled's built and ships very soon, I probably won't have it till the beginning of February at the earliest. So definitely not ideal. Now, Upstate Blake Sled did ship. It's super similar to mine, but it's going to a different area um, of the Northeast. Mine's gonna be coming to Central New York. So I guess when that happened, I thought mine can't be far behind, but his shipped, at, uh, I think it's two weeks ago at this point, and there's been no update on mine. So I don't really know what the deal is there. Uh, I'm not sure how two sleds could be so similar and not shipping around the same time. The whole black tunnel thing is held pretty true with everything else I've seen. Um, VR1s have definitely had some colored tunnels go. I've, I've seen a few of those. Um, but assaults definitely, even if the panels are different colors, they pretty much have all had black tunnels so far. Upstate Blake is the only one I've seen with a colored tunnel that has at least shipped, so. Now, I have bought seven sleds in the seven years I've been really making YouTube videos. I ordered six of those, and only two have ever come in before December. And that sucks. So I have had really bad luck with snow checking slash spring ordering. The only two sleds that ever came in before December were my 2017 Assault, which had a black tunnel, and my 2020 Riot. Other than that, everything has been December 15th or later. So that would be my 2019 Assault 850 that came in December 30th. My 2021 Renegade XRS came in, I believe it was December 12th or 13th but I didn't pick it up till like the 17th. My Lynx Rave RE didn't come in till the middle of January. And now my Polaris Assault Boost is looking like maybe February. So not great. Definitely have had bad luck and uh, it's not very fun to be honest with you. So I kind of want to talk about this whole spring order slash snow check nonsense. I think it's getting pretty far from ideal as far as how it's been working out the, especially the last couple seasons. And uh, I just want to share kind of the problems I'm seeing with it and uh, ideally how they can make it better. So one of the first things I wanna cover that might not seem like a big deal to most people, but it's just the excitement of the whole thing. Um, when you think you're gonna be riding one sled, and even if you have something else to ride, but you've been thinking, oh, I, I have this new Polaris Assault coming. Let me get some accessories for it. You know, let me, for me, plan YouTube videos. You know, oh, I can't wait to show my buddies how fast my new sled is, or, you know, the, I can't wait to try that new suspension out, you know, whatever it is. Like, you've been thinking all year, all summer, since you ordered this sled in March, that you're gonna have this sled sometime to ride. You know, snow hits the ground, you're gonna be on it. And, you get to the winter and you don't have it. I mean, it's just not, it's not ideal, it's not fun. I would almost rather not have a new sled ordered so I can just think all summer, you know, I can't wait to try this new thing on my links. I can't wait to, you know, adjust that. Maybe, uh, you know, change the limiter strap or add this accessory to it, you know, really be fully committed to a sled rather than live this in-between life of I love my links, but I thought I was gonna be on this other sled and that's where my head's at right now. You know, when you pass around the trail, you're like, dang, I wish I, wish I had mine. Um, so I think from an excitement standpoint, it's definitely a tough sell to tell people to just get over it and deal with the fact that there's supply chain issues or, or whatever reason there could possibly be for sleds being this late. Next up is resale value. If you are the type of person that hangs on to your sled so you don't get screwed over when you snow check one, um, you're probably gonna be riding your sled. The best time to sell it is the fall. I mean, if you wanna get rid of it in the spring so you don't have it, that's one thing, that's your prerogative. If you hang on it, onto it till the fall, you'll probably get the most money for it. 
especially if you can wait till like September, October, maybe even early November, that's when you're gonna get the most money for your sled. Having to wait until, you know, December, January. I didn't sell my 2021 Renegade XRS until February. Um, that's far from ideal and pretty much on the cusp of, I mean, I think the, the new Skidoo sleds come out in the middle of February. So, I mean, I'm selling my used sled as the, t the next model year is about to be released. So that's not ideal. And you're putting miles on these sleds and losing resale value there. You're making it so people either have to commit to a, a, a trade in number most of the time and, and hand their sled over. If they have a good dealer, like I'm lucky enough to have Bibbins, that will arrange for you to take your sled back while you're waiting for your new one. Um, obviously that is a, a big positive, but also now you're putting the dealers in a situation where they agreed you know, to take a sled in at a certain price with certain mileage and, and get it sold, and now they can't do that. They have to wait till they can get their customer their new sled, then they gotta take it back in on trade, and they have to try to sell it in the middle of the season. So I think that's far from ideal for everybody except you know the manufacturers building the sleds. Kind of the last thing, I did touch on it a little bit, but when you order parts for these sleds and you think you're gonna be able to install them preseason because you spring ordered your sled and you can't, that sucks. Um, I'm in that situation right now. The snow is melted, which is good for not having my new sled, but I have sponsor parts I want to put on. I have my own parts I want to put on, and this would be the gr a great time to do it. You know, feel like I'm still connected with snowmobiling a little bit. You know, give me something to do, uh, but I can't. I don't have a sled, so or I don't have that sled. I've noticed a lot of dealers are getting sleds in and able to offer them up to people in exchange of what they ordered. Now, I don't know if some of these are demos or if some of these are sleds that have already been backed out on. But I know for a fact I have people I've, I've talked to through Instagram that have sleds ordered that aren't coming in and they have an option to take a very similar model but in a totally different color. I don't know why this happens and you know we heard in the spring that there were gonna be limited numbers, not as many people were gonna be able to order sleds and yet the sleds are still getting either backed out on or ordered and aren't allocated to anybody. And it's just odd to me. Um, it's not quite as prevalent it, where I'm from. I'm kind of like the middle of everything, central New York. So we got Tug Hill Riders, you got Old Forge Riders. So they move pretty quick around here. But if you go on like Facebook Marketplace, there are dealers that have like a couple VR1 booths, a couple assault booths. And it's just like, how is this happening? How, how do I not have my sled? And there are others sitting on dealer floors right now. Like, uh, you know, that that's just not, not fun either. I mean, I don't want to like step away from my order with Bibbins because I've, I've worked with this dealer a lot. They've done a lot of great things for me. So like I would never do that. But to know that like other people that may have not even ordered a sled can just walk into a dealer and just grab one because Polaris, you know, has some sort of process where that's possible. Even though they have this ironclad ordering system where that's not supposed to be possible, um, that just sucks to see. And I wish it wasn't that way. Um, not to mention there are in-season models that have come in and are sitting there and my sled's still not built. That sucks too. So uh, yeah, I don't know. This will probably make some people upset too, but I have noticed it's a little bit more prevalent with Polaris than it is with the other manufacturers. The two huge delays I'm seeing this season are Polaris and then Lynx. Um, Lynx with all the shredder sleds seems to be having a lot of issues getting those delivered. They do seem to be rolling into dealers now, which is obviously good. Um, but those were definitely very delayed. I saw a lot of people really upset about that. They did seem to get all their trail models shipped very early. Ironically, this year I didn't order one and I probably would have had it in like October. Then obviously Polaris is also having just a, a slew of struggles. It seems like not many 9Rs have landed. They're starting to trickle out now. Um, a lot of Boost VR1s have landed, but very few Boost Assaults, so on and so forth. So. Um, Skidoo seems to have done a really good job with the G5. I know they probably still have other models that are delayed, but um, every time I went to Bibbins, they had like five or six G5 sitting out front for every like two Polarises they were delivering. So it seems like they're able to get those delivered at a pretty decent rate. Um, and a lot of guys I know on YouTube that ordered a G5 have it. So honestly, I have no idea on Articat and Yamaha. Um, it seems like the sleds are out there, but I haven't really heard anything about huge delays. So I imagine they're, they're getting them done as, as they can. So how do I think they should fix all of this? I personally think the simplest thing to fix this whole debacle is to stop with all the spring order models. Don't get rid of all of them, but get rid of a lot of them. There's no reason to have a Polaris Assault 650, 850, a Polaris Assault 850 Boost, you know, VR1s. 
You got a VR1 129, you got a VR1 137. Both can come with an 850 or a 650. Then you got a VR1 129 and 137 that can come with a boost. Then you have XCRs. You got the 128s and the 136s. Um, you know, there are so many freaking models out there. Stop with having so many of the 650 and 850 models being snow check exclusive. Take the XCR and the boost sleds, make those your spring order trail models, and have everything else be in season available. And if you really want to order a certain color, that's something you can do. Um, I think the bulk of people would be more interested in just walking into a dealer, seeing what's on the floor, and grabbing one. I think right now, to have any sort of like decent model, the fact that you have to snow check it is affecting not only things on the buyer's side, but making the manufacturing side way too complicated. And then you can actually get out these Patriot Boosts and these 9Rs to your customers that, you know, this year it was hard to get allocations for some of these sleds. Guys with trying to get 9Rs were looking all over the Midwest, you know. Guys that wanted Assault Boosts, there weren't a ton of them out there. You had to go to a couple dealers sometimes to, to get a, a Assault Boost ordered, you know. Um, make your life easier. I know technically you'll probably have leftovers again. You may have to have parts sitting on the shelves a little bit longer, but like, I can't imagine that if this continues on, people are gonna keep snow checking as frequently. I think it's getting to a point where it's kind of like do or die for this process. Um, if it doesn't get corrected soon, I don't think people are gonna keep doing it. On that note, to be brutally honest with you guys, this is probably gonna be the last time I snow check for at least a couple years. Um, I don't wanna play this game anymore. I would rather take my boost assault and modify it and kind of like do stuff to it than play this game for the eighth year in a row. Um, it's just not fun anymore. Like it sucks to make these videos. It sucks to go through thinking like, should I put the video out? Should I leave it alone? It's not the content I wanna be making. I wanna be riding these sleds and like trying new stuff on them. And I really worked the last couple years to try to move at a very aggressive pace to be able to get the sleds, do the mods, ride the sleds, make the content, do it again next year. And I just think I could spread that pace out a little bit more and still bring a lot of content and not have to play this game anymore. And I think that's definitely what I wanna do. I don't think there's any sled that could possibly be released that could convince me to snow check or spring order, to be totally honest with you guys. I don't care if player springs and 9R to the trails. I it would probably be last on my list after how this year went. Um, if Skidoo comes out with a G5 backcountry, it would be cool, but I probably wouldn't bother. If they come out with a G5 backcountry turbo, really cool, but again, probably wouldn't bother because it would probably get delayed. I mean, maybe not. Like I said, Skidoo's had slightly better luck, but I just don't want to take that risk anymore. Whatever facelift gets done to the Lynx, um, you know, would be cool to try it, but I just, I had bad luck with Lynx too. Um, it's just not, not something I'm interested in right now. I hope snow checks get back to a point where if your sled was delivered in December, it was late, you know, cause that used to be a thing. Back when the Mox Z's were delivered in December, I remember um, on Do Talk, people were losing their minds. They were like, this is, so, this is ridiculous. I can't believe my sled's so late. Now if your sled's delivered in December, everyone's like, well, there's no snow yet at least. Like. Come on, like what is the point of snow checking to get these sleds so late? Like the fact that I'm gonna get a 2023 sled and the season's gonna almost be over, it just, it just, it's upsetting. It's stressful, it's upsetting. Um, you know, it's just not what you wanna experience at all. So um, yeah, that's kind of my prerogative on it. And if you're still waiting on your sled, especially if it's a Polaris, let me know down below. I'm really curious to know model, engine, and color, like what you're waiting on. Um, ideally, we'll see these manufacturers get back to the most premium sleds being the spring order sleds, and then kind of the in-between sleds and, and the, you know, what's in season now, just being in season models. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys sticking with me through this process. I hope it gives you a little bit of insight if you don't really spring order and snow check very often, kind of like if it goes bad, what to expect. Um, there's definitely some other guys on YouTube. Jesse James has had good luck with it. Um, the Sled Addicts, they've had pretty good luck every year with their snow checks, so they're, they're probably worth checking out if you wanna see like the good experiences. Um, but, I'm here for the good and the bad. Um, I hope soon I have a good snow check experience and I can share that with you guys too. 
But until I get some sort of uh, big update on the sled, this is probably the last I'll talk about the whole snow check thing. Or if the season comes to an end and I still don't have it, obviously I'll have to make something at that point. But until then, think snow, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.